bluff is buzzing, baby. What a big week for Portland Pilot and the men's basketball program. And we're going to keep the March Madness on the bluff going today. It's lunch with leggings. I'll explain in a second. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Ann Schatz coming at you from the Child Center. Nowhere else I'd rather be. Proud member of the Portland Pilot broadcast team for both the men's and the women's basketball programs. And just delighted to have you here with us at the Child Center. I got to tell you, before we dive into this thing, uh, working with this program, working with this school, with the student athletes, with the coaches, with the fans, is one of the highlights of my career. So when they said, hey, are you interested in maybe uh, poking around a little bit with this noon chat with Leggins, the lunch with Leggins, I said, and how? Because this is what's going on. On Monday, just a few days ago, the Portland Pilots announced their new head coach coming to the University of Portland from EWU. I mean, Eastern Washington and Cheney has got a great basketball program. But right now, this Leggins guy, Shante, is right here on the bluff with us because he he is our new head guy. 12 years in Cheney. That's Shantae's legacy with those Eagles and that great program that he established there. 12 years, the last four as a head coach. And what he did with the Eagles program is absolutely spectacular. In year one, in year one, because of what Shantae stands for, taking on all the big dogs, I remember them beating Stanford of the Pac-12. Yeah, you knew something special was brewing in Cheney. In year three, we're talking about the Big Sky Conference Coach of the Year and so close to the NCAA tournament before COVID hit. Year four, just concluding, NCAA tournament, baby. Yeah, they finish second in the conference, but they win the conference championship tournament, and Shantae takes his club to the NCAA tournament to take on the Blue Blood powerhouse, Kansas. Shantae's club had Kansas on the ropes at halftime, only to succumb, but I'll tell you what all the experts knew at that point, this young man, was not just an up and comer as far as young coaching talents in the country, he was knocking on the door and breaking through it. So that's what today is all about. Shantae Leggins, the new head coach at the University of Portland. So big doings here on the bluff and no better, nobody better to walk us through the process of getting Shantae from Cheney to the bluff is Scott Lakeham. Vice President for Athletics. Scott, we're delighted to have you with us. I know Shantae has been on your radar. I know you were aware of this guy for a long, long time. How did you land Shantae Leggins? And first off, nice having you here. Cheers. You're, you're the best. Thank you. Um, first, it's a reflection exercise. I mean, on, on why we were where we were and making sure that we're supporting the men's basketball program budget-wise, support staff-wise, Everything from a university. If you're going to find the right person, you need to make sure they're setting them up to succeed. So there's, okay. there's been a lot of reflection there. Um, from a recruiting perspective, you know, this is when ADs recruit. Coaches recruit every day. ADs recruit during a coaching search. And you're always, you've always got eyes on the TV. And what Shante did with his team at the end of last year um, definitely caught attention. And I remember watching Eastern play Arizona this year and texting back and forth with our senior associate AD, Jason Bro. Like, what they're doing there is very, very special. And then watching them run through the Big Sky. I mean, the Big Sky Conference is no joke. I agree. There, there's five or six coaches uh, in that league that could easily be in our league and succeed as well. Um, but I called many, many people about Shante. Um, Character-wise, recruiting-wise, how has he had success? Does that success translate from Cheney to Portland? But there were three things, Ann, and, and, and you know how we are. There are th three things that are important to us here that we were looking for. Okay. One is somebody that culture is everything to them. Culture is paramount. Uh, a culture of trust and accountability with staff, with the department, with the university, and most importantly, the student-athletes. Okay. Right. Somebody that's, that's going to put culture first. Two is recruiting. Right. You can't win if you don't have the players. And you look at that Eastern roster, it's built on high school players that have gotten better each and every year. No transfers. No transfers. OK. Players from Southern California, players from the Pacific Northwest. And, you know, we know a little bit about Australia here on the block. Love it. Yep. So you look at those roster connections made sense right away. The last is player development. If you look at our history and, you know, Jack Avina and Eric Reveno and some of the coaches that have had prolonged success here, 
it's been with people like Darwin Cook and Jose Slaughter and Alec Wintering and Luke Sigma, people that were here four years and were the core and, and led the locker room and did a lot of great things. It wasn't one and done. It wasn't transitioning the roster every year. It was building for success. And those are the three things that, that Shante, you know, not only does he say he do, does, but talking to people he's worked for, worked with, people that have played for him, that's what he's about. So I think once we had that, then it was just working to make sure that, that, that he was on board and we were on board and um, couldn't be excited, more excited to have it done. Can't help but ask you about that. Uh, let's go back to that Kansas game for a minute. Uh, <laughs> as far as the NCAA tournament is concerned, EWU, the 14th seed, Kansas, of course, the third seed. Everybody thought it was going to be a, a, a walkabout for KU. Folks who knew better and knew this Shantae fella, yeah, they, uh, they're they thinking not so fast. So you're watching this game. And it, it, you guys are watching this game for a lot of different reasons. And you must have been dying a little bit because you're thinking, I got to think, if Shantae and that bunch wins that game, who else is going to be knocking on the door? Yeah, I mean, you, you have to trust your relationships, right? And, and I felt that, that the calls that we had done and, and work we had done, that our relationship was in a good place. Um, I'm not going to say, and don't tell Shantae, but we were rooting for Eastern the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you knew they had a chance to win that game, right? Um, Eastern was a team that was built to win some games. They were coming off three tournament wins in a row. Um, Kansas was coming off a pause. It, it had upset written all over it, and I would not have at all been surprised Me if neither. they had won that game. Me neither. Uh, without further ado, should we bring the guy in? Let's bring him in. All right, Shantae. Now, now careful as you walk, cause walk behind here or whatever. Yep, don't get in front of my camera. All right, stick that headset on. Well, I'm thinking of it, too. We're looking at great highlights of, of Shantae working the sidelines. We'll talk about this guy's energy personified. And fans, you know, I got to tell you, if you want to ask Shantae a question, we're here for you. All you got to do is use hashtag lunch with leggings, all one word, and that's L-E-G-A-N-S, lunch with leggings, and we will ask Shantae your questions. Shantae, I don't know if you get a uh, little nostalgia looking at some of that video. You you love those those lads back in, in Cheney. I know it was a tough goodbye, but I'm telling you what, young man, this is a huge hello. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. And that that is, you look at those uh, young men and, and know their families and just, you know, your heart breaks, you got to leave them. Um, but the time was right. You know, the timing uh, couldn't have been better. Um, having the season like we had and, and finishing the way we did was was amazing and, and being able to see the joy on their faces, you know, um, was 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 what you live for as a coach. You want you want those young men to, to feel success. You want them to to understand, you know, what it takes and everything that you put in and the morning workouts and, you know, the, the up and downs and the, you know, going through the hard times, yep. going through pauses and and just to see their joy and just to see how happy they were when they were jumping around celebrating was was, you know, one of the best things as a player or a coach I've ever been a part of. And so, you know, it, it does show a little nostalgic and, uh, you know, I'm going to miss those men. Got to ask you uh, a question that a lot of pilot fans are asking. Why Portland? I mean, you were getting offers. You were looked at as one of the best young coaches in the country by everyone who knows this business and knows the game. Why Portland? Why is this the right time for you? Well, it's the perfect time, man. And, and, and the man sitting next to me, Scott, it should have had a great vision. And being able to, to sit down and talk to him was, was huge. And it was huge for my wife and I. And, and you know, it, it, it was it was something that they, they had a plan. And they, they they have such great, you know, pride here. And they had great facilities. And I'm looking at it. It's great. It's in the Northwest. And, and it's a basketball culture. And it just makes you – it made me feel really comfortable with, with where I was going. And, and uh, you know, yeah, you, get, you did get calls. You know, you, you see things on Twitter after the game. You're trending to go to Indiana and all this kind of crazy. I saw those too. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> My wife did too, <laughs> um, but you know it, it. It did not. It did not phase me one bit. And you know, I, from from just just getting the vision and understanding and, and just understanding how important it is to build something special. And this is a place where I, I'm, I'm walking around campus today. Mm. I'm, I'm seeing things. I, I've you know, I, I, it, it's a blessing. You know, and I'm just. It's a sleeping giant here. And this could be. A, it, it, this is not. You no, know, it could. It's going to be a very very special job, and it's going to be a special place where people want to come and watch and and, and play basketball here. Scott, I know what was really critical for you, um, the culture, the vision, but it was that, that family, if you will, uh, within the athletic department, within the entire university, that's so crucial. Family, we, partnership. 
Yeah, well, we sell that from the start, right? We sell it with our head coaches. We sell it with staff. We sell it with student athletes. I mean, you're you're a part of this family for life. And Shante hasn't had a lot of stops in his career. Doesn't have a lot of tags yep. on his luggage. He had stayed at Eastern <laughs> for a very long time. Uh, was very loyal, and that was something that was very attractive to us. And you know, we know our role here. I mean, I'm looking for somebody that's a grinder, that, yeah. that's going to work hard, that that loves the underdog mentality, mm. right? We've got a, a building, Mike Meek and women's basketball and Nick Carlin Voigt and men's soccer. We have a building of grinders who love being the underdog and, and love knocking people off. And he, he fits that mold perfectly. Scott, you bring up uh, Mike Meek on the women's side. You looking for that new head coach on the women's side and sitting down and having coffee with Mike and that first impression that was uh, palatable to you, you, you still speak of it. Let's shift gears now to the first impression with the guy on your right, my left. How did that, how did that impact you, that first meeting in person? The camera angle on the Zoom meeting was a little wiggy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> no, little di- I mean, it, it's so different, um, the, the Zoom process and how it went. And that, I think it speaks even more to Shante and, and his personality and his ability to just kind of bring you in and, and yeah. believe in, in what he's selling and what he's done is even on Zoom, it jumped through the screen um, for Jason Bro and I. After the, the first conversation, as we brought other people in on campus, was like, yeah, this is a guy that could very much work at UP and have a lot of success. Appreciate that. We talk about family here, and, and, and we don't do that loosely. We do it with deep commitment. Uh, there's, a, there's a former pilot, Pooh Jetter, that talks about family all the time. And the number two career score for the pilots, when Pooh Jetter comes back to visit the guys now and, and the folks on campus, he says, I am a pilot. Mm-hmm. And I know when Pooh got word of the fact that Shantae Leggins is going to be the new pilot head coach, this guy was beaming and smiling ear to ear. Hello, pilot fans. This is Pooh Jetter here, class of 2006. And I want to give a big shout out and congrats to Coach Shantae Leggins. Uh, you did an amazing job at Eastern Washington. I know you're going to do even a better job at University of Portland. Um, welcome to the family, and, and let's all come together and let's cheer them on and support and serve and make sure that the pilots are represented across the world. All right? Salute. Coach, welcome to the UP family. Really excited to welcome you to campus. Um, I'm excited not to be the uh, least tenured head coach on staff for much longer. Uh, But seriously, welcome. Look forward to meeting you in person. Aloha. Welcome, Coach Leggins. Welcome to the pilot family. We're so excited to have you here and have you do some great things with the pilots. Hey, Shantae. Nick Carlin, Voigt here, men's soccer. Welcome to the Portland family. When you get to know me, you'll know that I love basketball. I actually played a little bit of college basketball myself and looking forward to, to challenging you in a, in a game of horse. We have the NBA here. Uh, it's not the National Basketball Association, but it's a noon basketball time association. So I'm excited to welcome you to the family, get to know you and your family. We're both 39 and you're gonna love being a pilot. So glad you're on board and, and can't wait to meet you. How great is that? That's I pretty- mean, they're rolling out the red carpet. It's pretty cool. It's, it's really good. And I'm, I'm not losing in horse. Uh, oh, <laughs> boy. Okay. The gloves are off. The gloves are off. All right. You got a challenge in front of you, young yeah. man. We're not going to sugarcoat anything. Mm-hmm. We're, we're, if you look at the, the recent history of, of uh, the win-loss record on the men's side, um, there's, there's a road to hoe and a hill to climb. Yeah. How do you go about this realistically but with that passion and with your success rate, I mean, when you look at your winning percentage at uh, Eastern Washington, it's nuts. As good as it's ever been in that Big Sky Conference. Yeah. What are you going to do? How you meet this challenge? You get good people. Okay. You know, I'm working with them already. Um, obviously, the athletic department, the, the department here has been great. But you bring around good people. You bring in good young men that, that understand, you know, what hard work is. You bring in good students. You bring in people that, you know, you bring in young, you know, student athletes that people want to get behind. And you, and you fill this place up. And you fill this place up by winning. And you fill this place up by getting the community involved. And those are things that we're definitely going to do right from the start. You know, you, all, you have assistant coaches that are, 
willing to go above and beyond, be here early in the morning, stay here late at night, also have a little social life to themselves. And I think being in Portland, they'll have a little bit of that. But going to high school games, I mean, there's so many good players here. And, and just, the, just the state and just the city of Portland, there's so many good players in this area. And, you know, you got to go find them. You got to make sure that they're – you got to make sure you, those, you build those relationships. And I feel like we've done a great job in the Northwest, and I feel like there's a lot of great players, not just good, but great players in Portland that can help us, you know, try to vie for championships in this league. And I, I believe it, you know, deep down in my soul, I, I believe it in my heart. I, I, I looked, yeah, I saw the win-loss record, but that's in the past. You know, I hear you. Only, you. You only could go in the future. We're zero and zero, you know, and, and we're starting, you know, we we, we started on Monday uh, when I signed my papers and we, we were recruiting and we got to find the right guys to, to come to this university. But from just looking around and as soon as you could show anybody what this campus has, I mean, it's going to be easy to recruit here and you got to find those right, those right young men who want to be a part of this. Obviously, you being over in Cheney for the last 12 years, you understand the Pacific Northwest. You understand the kind of ballers that we have in this neck yeah. of the woods. Then you translate that into how you play. Mm -hmm. Loose, fast, fun, wide open threes, disciplined. Yes. That's going to that's going to attract some of the right guys. Oh, definitely. You got you got to be creative on the offensive side of the game. You you, you know, you, guys, you know, you, you can't be foolish. Guys watch NBA basketball. If you're a high school kid, if you're an 8th grader, if you're a parent and you they watch high school basketball and they play basketball with a certain pizzazz, with a certain flair, with swag as as they say. And you got to let them be creative. You got to let them play on the offensive end. Obviously, you got to do it within a system within, you know, playing unselfishly, but you see the NBA, they got 24 seconds and everybody seems to touch it and they they have 28 assists in one game, and, and you know they, they're moving the ball as a team. If one player had 28 assists in one game, he'd be pretty good, John Stockton. But <laughs> you know they move the ball, and everybody plays together. They share it. And then on the defensive end, you got to be tough, and you got to be willing to put your body on the line, get on the ground, and rebound. And and those are the guys we're trying to find. You know, if you want to play here, you got to you got to love the game on the offensive end. You got to be skilled. You got to shoot. You got to dribble. You got to pass. You got to understand concepts. Um, I don't care if you're six ten. If you're six ten and can handle, it, you're playing on the perimeter. If you're you're a six-two guard that's really strong. Go inside and score. And so, you know, we're really going to find find people that want to play that style of game. I think a lot of people do. Um, as you can see, a lot of things are moving into that direction, and we're going to find those guys. And I think they're going to be really excited to come watch us play. And I think that people want to get behind it and be supportive of it. Okay. Now I know you're a Cali guy. You mm -hmm. you grew up in the Santa Barbara area. Tough Santa Barbara area. Yeah. All right. Watch out. Okay. Now so and and it, I hate to tell everybody this, but you're kind of a Laker fan, aren't you? Big time Laker fan. Dodger right. fan. But, whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm going to yeah. stop you right there. You're in Portland now, young man, so let, let's be careful where you wear that I, Laker I jersey. Know. I know. Now, and, and so the rivalry between the Lakers and the Blazers, pretty good. Yep. Biggest rivalry in basketball, if you want to talk about history, Lakers and Celtics. Yep. And we've got the biggest Celtics fan in oh. the whole wide world ready to give you a little talking to. That's terrible. We're 18 now, so we're tied. So, you know, 18 championships, 18. Che next one we che win, we'll be okay. Coach Chaves is here talking to you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. Boss, man, my first boss. There What's it is. <laughs> How are you doing, Shante? Congratulations. I'm doing great, man. How are you? I'm doing great. Now, now don't forget, you cannot count those Minneapolis Lakers. <laughs> Just a reminder that we George are a holiday team. <laughs> we do the Mikans every yeah. day, so we can count them. We count those. Okay. We do the drill every morning. <laughs> That is fantastic. Well, hey, I just wanted to say congratulations, Shante. You did uh, outstanding work at Eastern, and uh, I know you made uh, you made them proud. And I, I know you'll do the same at the University of Portland. Well, this is this is a shock to me. Thank you for for coming on and saying that. You're my first boss. I love you, man. I, you got me started. I can't appreciate you more than than anything. You got us. I mean. Me and Tatiana took our first pictures with you, and I couldn't even fit the hat you gave me. I was so happy. That so, begs the question, it. Coach. It begs the question, what did you see in this guy? Why why give him that nod? I mean, that started everything. Yeah, you know, um, and, and Shantae can appreciate this as to where uh, – when he first got to Cheney and where the, the program was at that point in time, and then where it, it went uh, really during the time he was there, uh, that decade plus, um, just unbelievable. And I, I think, you know, the way Coach Hayford left it, it was, uh, it was to a point where I think the baton needed to be passed. I mean, in, 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 in a lot of times, that's the best case scenario because you can start the, you can continue on with what's going on and, Shantae not only took it where it was, he elevated it. 
And so that's all you can ask for. And now he's got a tremendous opportunity at University of Portland. Bill, uh, Pilot Nation is watching. We're having lunch with legs, by the way. Uh, Pilot Nation is, is, is watching and listening. How about a little message to the Pilot Faithful as to what they can look forward to and why this energy is going to sustain itself? Yeah, you know, um, just a passionate, passionate individual that is just a team player. And you're going to, uh, the person that's next to you right now is going to be the biggest cheerleader for every sport team that's, uh, that's with the pilots. You're going to see him, you're going to see him at every event, really. And up and down the hallways, it's, <laughs> It can be loud. It can be loud. But you know what? You just sometimes you just gotta shut the door. It's all good. But, <laughs> but I think I think people are gonna uh, be excited about um, the energy uh, he's gonna bring. And uh, you know, hey, we're all in challenging jobs, right? I mean, at the end of the day, um, it's uh, it's incredibly competitive. But I know you've got a you've got a winner and in, uh, in Shante. And uh, like anything else, you know, sometimes it's just gonna take a little bit of time to to build it. And when you do. Um, you're going to have a, a, an annual, um, a team that annually you're going to be excited about. Coach, thanks a ton for being with us. Thanks, boss. We, we, like, we like ambushing this guy once in a while and, and keeping him on his toes. So thank you very much for taking the time. Hey, Shante, I haven't said much because the Celtics are under 500 right now. So I can't <laughs> they are. Much. He's been missing <laughs> the calls. He's been missing the calls. <laughs> uh, cheers. Thank you. Stay safe. Bye-bye. I love that. Yeah, it, it's team meeting time for the Celtics. Anyway, <laughs> although you're Lakers with, with LeBron's ankle. Eh. Uh, all right. So, like I said, and I want to make sure I get this right, fans can ask you questions. So all they got to do is lunch with leggings, all one word, L-E-G-A-N-S, to send a question. All right. Uh, I can't read the question, so, Jose, tell me what it is in my ear, and I'll say it. Oh, on the assistant coaches. That's right. All right. What is the timeline on the assistant coaches who we're looking at? If you can tip your hand a little bit or how quickly you want to fill uh, those spots. Well, get with Scott a little bit. Um, okay. We have some good ideas with some great candidates. Okay. Uh, and we want guys that um, we want coaches that will be willing to do anything to get the student athlete and make sure they feel comfortable um, and make sure that, you know, they're, they're, they're in the right position, the right place. We're going to we're going to find a, a group of a staff that's really ready and willing to do, you know, go above and beyond. Now, you know that these guys that you're going to bring in are aware of the fact that you text them in the middle of the night and expect them to text right back. They, yeah, for sure. That, that'll go. That'll definitely. Lord I've, have mercy. I've gotten better at that. Okay. It's uh, Usually, if it's their scout, they better be ready for oh, calls. Oh, boy. The okay. Night. Let them be aware. Uh, but, yeah, they, they, they'll be ready. The, the assistant coaches I had before at Eastern were amazing. They're, they're great people. Um, they, they've, they've, again, like those are young men that have gone above and beyond. They're young. They're energetic. Um, they do a great job. They're, and so th- those, those young men have done great, and they, they're young, so they, they're okay with the text and things like that. Um, but it, it, it's been amazing to be, be able to coach with, with men like that, and so I'm hoping to find guys just like that. Heck, yeah. You know you will. All right, we're going to take a quick break and then come right back. Lunch with Leggins continues. Awesome. Send your questions coming. Uh, we love having you pipe in. We've got more guests, so we're going to take a quick break and come on and back in a second. Back perfect. in a second. Yeah, perfect. Coach Leggins, welcome to Portland. We're excited to have you and look forward to the future with you as our basketball coach. Hi, Shantae. Um, I'm Susie Campbell, the women's tennis coach here. And I just wanted to, on behalf of myself and the program, welcome you to the bluff. Um, I've been here for 28 years now and uh, have raised my family here on the bluff. And um, we are very, very excited to see the men's basketball program um, improve. And it sounds like with all of your uh, strength, you'll be able to um, make that happen here. So uh, campus has improved so much over the years and um, it's continuing to do that. Um, Welcome to the community. And um, we, I look forward to meeting you and uh, welcome. Let's go pilots. This is where you can discover who you are. And who you want to be. Where you can find your place in the world. And discover how to make it better. Where you can explore your faith and spirituality. And use them to strengthen your community. Where you will learn not just to make a living, 
but how to live your life. This is the University of Portland. Welcome back to the Child Center. Delighted to have you with us. Shante Leggins, the new boss. He'll be roaming the sidelines nonstop <laughs> for the men's basketball team here on the bluff. Uh, Shante, it's really neat to hear from some of the guys that impacted you, yeah. mentored you, some of the guys you grew up with, and, and we're looking at a, a pilot alum, uh, Donald Wilson, who was a fan favorite, obviously, here, <laughs> member of our broadcast team, and I know you guys grew up balling. Donald, can you hear us okay? You with us? Yes, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How about a quick little message for your guy here? Man, first off, congratulations. I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm proud of you. Uh, you know from back in the day I've looked up to you and watched you play. And it's, uh, it's been amazing to watch your journey. And even now as a coach, I, I get to sit back and watch some of the things you're doing and implement some of the things with, with my guys. So it's amazing to see a guy on a bluff that I, I trust, I know, and I'm proud of. And uh, I can't wait to see what you do. And hopefully uh, the community is a great community, a pilot community will you know wrap their arms around you and help you get wherever you need to go. And my phone is always open. My door is always open for you. I appreciate that. It's been a while, hasn't it? Man, it's been, uh, it's, been, it's been a long time. I think the last time was what, uh, either either on the AAU scene or uh, I know vividly in, in Amsterdam. I, I still have the Ooh. highlight tapes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a bad game. We lost. <laughs> he got a couple of dunks and a couple of threes. I, we'll, we'll, we'll get out here and play horse. I got you in that. I can't jump with you. No, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll have me in that one, but like, oh, I, I still think I have that highlight tape. Other than that, though, man, I, I am so, so proud. And from uh, all the alumni I've, I've talked to, uh, we, we finally got a guy. And and that, and that and that's what I look forward to. I, after your, you know, meeting on Tuesday, when you addressed everyone, I called a couple friends and said, hey, if I can get back in shape right now, I'm, I'm going to play for Shante. And oh, if I had maybe. to do it again, I would go play for Shante. So if any athlete out there watching, you got a guy, come, come yeah. play. Come play for Shante. That's awesome. Donald, how, how critical is it for the alums to feel this energy, to, to say, this is our guy, let's get behind him. This is a smaller school. It, it's family. How critical is that? Uh, just like you said, it's family. And so when family speaks positive about other family members, it makes it easier for somebody that's not in that family yet to feel that, feel that love and to know that they will be taken care of. And this is what you have in Shantae at the Hill. So, Donald, obviously, uh, you were living large here on the bluff. It was clear how much you enjoyed it. No, really, fan favorite, great player. It was clear that you enjoyed your time here. Why is this such a special place? And and the and you know when Shantae goes and recruits, it'll be the kind of message you're about to tell us. Uh, it's it's a special place, one, because uh, they care about the athlete. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, no matter if you put the ball in a basket or not, they want to make sure you graduated and also understand that you can always come back and be a part of that family because you, you were here on campus and they allowed you to grow and mature. And so I will always uh, cherish that. And now you have, again, Shantae in, in a place to not only create better basketball players, but better men. So I'm, I'm excited to see where he goes with that. That's got to mean so much to you, Shantae. It does, but at the same time, he brought Pooh Jitter, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> That's what you really did, right? <laughs> That's what hey, you hey, really uh, did. According to according to Pooh, I mean, he had to jump <laughs> I didn't see his I didn't see his interview, but hey, we we had a good time there, and uh, and, and Pooh has always been one of my best friends uh, growing up. So it was good to at least have have a, a sidekick with you as well. Yeah. But at the end of the day, uh, it's it's one of those places where you're going to have a, a good time and, and get a chance to grow and be around people who care about you, and you can't ask for no more than that. That's big time, and that's that's the message we're bringing, man. We're yeah. family, and that's what we're going to be bringing. That's what I was with my players and their parents, and, and, and that's what we were as a staff where I was at before, and that's what I'm bringing here. So, yeah, 100%, man, and you do got to get awesome. back out here. We're trying to get a game, and I'm going to talk to them about getting an alumni game back so you got, you guys come out here against these young boys and see how good they really are. Hey, for sure. <laughs> I, I, I got to get in shape. I mean, I, I, if we play in half court, we're good to go. Yeah. Get to certain oh, spots come on. And, and I'm ready up to and go. Down, <laughs> up and down. You'll get them in the half court. It's IQ after that. <laughs> if we're getting up and down, I'm switching everything, and I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> cherry picking. All right? Hey, shot goes up and running the other way. <laughs> Only way to do it. <laughs> All right, Always. Donald, thank you for taking the time. Great to see you again. Thank you. Go out and run a few miles, will you? We're playing 94 <laughs> feet, young man. I will. I'm, I'm going to get on a bike. I'm going to do something because uh, <sighs> even even the players I have now, they say, hey, coach, we see videos. We want to go back at it. So I'm like, all right, we, we can do this. <laughs> we can do it. <laughs> Don't do it.
<laughs> Thanks for taking the time, man. Good to see you. All right, I'll see you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. All right, more uh, more fans went in, you know, building that culture, finding that leadership. Those guys that might be under the radar mm-hmm. or may have been passed up, if you will, but want to come and just leave it on the floor. That's that's the most important thing. And, you know, you have everybody, who, you know, you, <laughs> My, I've, I've had over 3,400 text messages, and I have my my voicemails full. It's never been full before. I usually answer and get back to them as soon as. You, but everyone has a player. Everyone has this and that. But you know, I want I want I want a staff, and I want to um, be able to go watch guys and, and see if they're good. And it, it doesn't matter what one person says. It matters what you know if they fit in with what we do. And we'll definitely be going to be going around recruiting. That's that's the main the the most important thing is having players. You know, yep. Phil, Phil Jackson's a great coach, but how was he with the Knicks without Kobe? Without MJ, without I mean, it, it's tough, and so you need players to go and and implement your system, and that's going to be huge. And and any you can get fooled in any way you want, but you need players to be good, and that's what that's that's our main goal is to go get some great young men that's going to you know represent this university with pride, and and they're going to get out there like you said and leave it all on the court, and that's that's all you can ask for from a student athlete, and that's what you want, and you know that's what we're looking for. Uh, that question was from uh, Randy Hevington, staff member. Ticket holder, season ticket holder, and that's this is a great time to remind you that uh, to jump on it right now to get your season tickets. PortlandPilots.com slash Leggins, L-E-G-A-N-S. That's how you get your tickets. No time like the present, huh, Legs? None. Come. Come out and support. I'm telling you, it's going to be fun basketball, and we're going to be doing it together. It's just not, you know, these, these, these 13 men that are going to be playing, but it's going to be the whole department. It's going to be everybody, and we're going to support, and we need your support, especially locally. It's, it's, going, to be gr- it's going to be a great ticket to get out here and come watch us play. Uh, yet another alum, Alec Wintering, again, fan favorite, a great player during his days at the University of mm-hmm. Portland. Rolling out the red carpet, the wel- welcome wagon is living large legs. I'm telling you, Alec really jacked about you coming to the bluff. Yeah, he, he's a he's a great player. I've, I've actually been in contact with him a little bit, and um, you know he's playing right now. Matter of fact, I think he's uh, in, in overseas. I believe I, I don't know exactly where, but I know he's playing. And and I'm, I, I'm, again, these alums these alums are huge here. I've, yeah. I've, I've been reached out to um, and talked to and told hey, how great of a place this is. And you know, you, you can go online, you can see on Twitter the things they say and this, that, and, you know, but when you get to talk to the players that were here and you get to see the alumni and, the, you know, how proud they are of, of this university, that really, that, that's huge for me because that's what I can take out and, and go recruit. We caught up with Alec in Spain. <coughs> He's got a little message for you. Hey, Coach Leggins, Alec Wintering here, class of 2017. I just wanted to congratulate you on our success at Eastern Washington and to say that I'm very excited that you're the new head coach of the pilot program. I'm looking forward to building a relationship with you personally. I'm looking forward to all the success you'll bring the program in the near future. And I just want to let you know I'm completely at your disposal. So if there's anything that I can do to help you or help the program, please feel free to reach out and let me know. I'd love to help any way possible. Um, I'm very confident knowing that the program is in great hands. The sky is the limit, and I can't wait to see how everything unfolds. Go Pilots. This is where you can discover who you are and who you want to be. Where you can find your place in the world. And discover how to make it better. Where you can explore your faith and spirituality. And use them to strengthen your community. Where you will learn not just to make a living, but how to live your life. This is the University of Portland. Welcome, Shantae and his family to the Portland Pilot family. Uh, we are just overjoyed to have you here and, um, you know, see what you're going to bring. We know we have complete confidence in you. We've seen programs here be turned around and uh, great things happen. And we know you're just the guy to change the culture and to be the one that uh, turns the pilot men's program into an awesome program that's at the top of the league. So. We just want to welcome you, and again, we're 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 just excited and thrilled to have you here, and uh, looking forward to many great years ahead. I love that from Mike Meek, <laughs> and if you're familiar at all with his journey, Shante, it was remarkable. Uh, him coming to the University of Portland a couple of seasons ago from George Fox, a really good Division three yep. school, and what Mike Meek did like that yeah. and i mean i'm not trying to put pressure on you <laughs> but this is a guy who can relate to exactly what you're going through 
No, it's one of the reasons, you know, I, I, I thought this would be a great spot. You know, I, I seen exactly what he did, and I seen how the, the program changed and the culture yes. changed, and, you know, they're playing for a championship. I mean, that's that's what you want to do in a program. You want to bring that kind of, you know, you want to bring that kind of excitement, and he did that his, his first couple of years, and so that, that really that that helped me with my decision mm. um, just by just going through and just looking at everything he's done, and I, I'm definitely going to be sitting in his office a lot asking him a thousand questions, and uh, he's got to kick me out because he's going to be more concerned with <laughs> <laughs> team but he's got to get me going he's got to get me rolling he's been great and you know he's reached out and sent a great text message made me mm. feel welcome and mm. you know that that's it just shows me so much about you know just this department you know I've gotten some great texts from people in this department saying how excited they are and um but that just means a lot and that that's that just it just further it just lets me know I'm in the right place I got you you know it's interesting uh the recruiting that Mike and his staff just it, it, it's it's top shelf and they have an Australian pipeline mm -hmm. that is second to none. Now, I know you've got some Australians. You left some Australians on the Eastern Washington <laughs> Club. What about your thoughts on international recruiting? And all I know is those Aussie women are tight with the Aussie men oh, yeah. down in that neck of the woods. So they're talking. They're yeah, talking. They are, and they, they know how nice it is here. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go over there. It's going to be pre it's going to be easier to grab a couple of them when you, when you hear, you know, the great things. And I've already, you know, some of the Aussies have already talked to some of the guys on my team um, before before this even happened. Um, and they said how great it was here. You know, I know that there's some kids that I'm I've been talking to that that know some some of the ladies on the team here, and so it's making it easier. And you know, when you when you have a, a successful program, even if it's not the men's program right now, they know it can be successful. They're very they're very mature kids. They they understand you know what it takes to be good, and that 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 helps everything out. And their their experience here, and and you know just international kids in general, if they have a great bond with somebody, or they have a or they they've seen it happen, they're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. It makes it easier to go there and recruit because they've seen it happen at a nice at a nice stage and they, they want to be a part of that too and it makes it easier recruiting so he's done a great job with that and you know right now his girls are helping me <laughs> with some kids over there so we know that the bedrock though mm -hmm. uh, the foundational pieces will be a lot of your recruiting in the united states mm -hmm. though and in the local areas we've yep. talked about that a little bit can you get the word out quickly and start looking and at kids quickly and getting into their living rooms, if you will, via Zoom or what have you? Yeah, that's going to be huge. That's the most important thing, like I said, players, and especially from the area. And I've, we've, we have have some great bonds. At least I have some great bonds with a lot of these coaches in the area, um, especially throughout, you know, Washington. And I'm getting – we're getting, you know, acclimated with a lot of a lot of mm -hmm. coaches here, which is great. Um, we've all, you know, we've recruited guys. We have guys from the, you know, state of Oregon in our school right now. And, you know, we're going to get into, we're going to get into houses. Like, just like you said, we're going to let them know how we're playing. We're working it right now. You know, we have offers out to a lot of these young, young kids right now in the 22, 23, and 24 class. And we're just working it right now. Now, this first year, you know, you never know what you have to do and who's left. And we've been doing a great job of, I've been doing a great job. I'm by myself right now. <laughs> I've been doing a great job, oh, yeah, not for long at all. And so I've been doing a great job of finding, you know, players right now that I think is good enough. Um, but again, if you're playing freshman early, uh, you know, at a, at a lot of rate, that means you're really building. I want to, we got to go find some guys immediately. And, and, you know, we, we want freshmen, but we also need some guys to compete early and, and we're doing a great job. And luckily this year is, it's just crazy year yeah. with, with the portal. And, and I've never even been in the portal so much. It, it's unbelievable. There's so many kids in this portal and you know, it pops up and you see the next one, you see the next one, you see the next one. It's like, well, I like this guy, but, uh, and so you got to find the right kid. Um, you know, you know, I, it's it's hard with transfers sometimes just because you know why they transfer, why they leave, and I think this year has been different. Um, and you could go find the right player because you know they're they're transferring and they're putting their name in the portal because it's it's what everyone's doing, and they like they may like the place they're at, but they want to see what else is out there. And I think that's the new fad right now. Mm. It'll die down in years to come. Um, but I just especially with the, you know, the COVID transfer thing, and they can go play immediately is is really. Um, has really put that portal <laughs> at ease. I mean, I, I can't believe it's... It's it, the Wild West, man. It is the Wild West, and you just got to find the right guy to have the great relationship, and you hope that you've you've recruited them before a little bit, and you, they call them bounce backs. I hope you get a couple of bounce backs. Okay. So um, we, we've been, we've been, I've been really looking at those pretty tough. You know, we just keep surprising you with some really cool <laughs> guests, and, and we're going to bring in a guy that goes way back with you, Ben Howland. Oh, Coach. Yeah. Coach... Coach is uh, still playing. It ain't fair. <laughs> Uh, Coach Howland, we know you're still in the midst of March Madness, so thank you very much for taking the team. Uh, and, Coach, you may have to unmute yourself. Can you hear me okay? 
Looks like you're on a bus. This is great. Awesome. This is how we roll, Shante. Let's see if we can get Ben That's... up and rolling. You with us, Coach? Yep. That guy, I can tell you, is in trouble. <laughs> how you doing? There. There. <laughs> coach, thank Kalita. you. Kalita. <laughs> Cheetah. Okay, Coach, you're, you're surprising our guy, Shante, here. This is beautiful stuff. Uh, share with us a little bit about your, your – Share us a hey, little Hold on a little, a little, little just one sec. got to get Matt to turn it up. I can't hear very well. Yeah, plug in your headphones. This there, is coach. the beauty of live stuff, Shante. This is coach the is unbelievable. Of, of live stuff. He still reads the newspaper. So do I. You got a problem with that? No, I do too. Okay, all right then. The Watch, it. To. Watch it. <laughs> There's something about turning the page. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. That's awesome. I go back with Coach Allen. He, Wait, him and I have the same mentor. What is your relationship with him, and how far back do you go? Were you, you know, just a pipsqueak? Yes. We'll get, we'll get this figured out, by the way. It was. I was a pipsqueak. Now I can hear. We have the same. We have the same mentor, um, Sal Rodriguez. He, oh. And he also kicked my butt in the tournament. Heartbreaking. So I, I still mad at him for that. <laughs> Coach, you got us now. I do. Thank you so much. It's great to be on with you. I'm so proud of Shante. He has worked so hard. And, and what's really fun for me is I've seen him grow from when he was a little kid at the Alita Boys Club, as he was mentioning. Sal Rodriguez was my mentor as a young kid, as he was for Shante. Shante spent a lot of time with Sal and his family. But uh, I actually went to junior high with Shante's uncle, Peter Fisher. So I know his mom, his, his uh, uncle. I've been knowing him, and he was a really good player as a young kid. Unbelievable work ethic. The same work ethic that you see in his coaching uh, was him as a player. And actually, when I was an assistant coach at UCSB, yeah. we had another assistant coach work with me who ended up being a really good role model and mentor for Shante as well, Ray Lopes. Mm. And uh, we're all out of Shante and, and you know to win at Eastern Washington is literally a miracle to get them to the tournament is such a huge accomplishment having coached the big sky myself at Northern Arizona I understand it very clearly and uh, University of Portland got a home run in this hire uh, in terms of work ethic in terms of knowledge in terms of teaching and motivating but most of all Shante to me is just a great example of what you know, administrators want as a mentor for young people and young young athletes. Uh, phenomenal story to see uh, what he's accomplished with his life thus far. Ben, there are a lot of doubters who say you can't win at the University of Portland as evidenced by their recent record. What do you say to that, especially with Shantae now on board? Yeah. <clears throat> you know what? I think Eric Reveneau did a very solid job. Yeah. I think he was there for 11 years. I know firsthand because he beat us when I was the head coach at UCLA. <laughs> but he had some really good teams. It's a great league. Uh, and I think that when anytime you have a multi-bid league, which there's very few of them, you know, you've got BYU, you've got Gonzaga, you've got St. Mary's. You're going to get those teams at home every year. He's going to recruit great players. I mean, the community's got to get on board, the campus community, the community there in Portland who love basketball. I mean, but Portland – is a great basketball community, and the state of Oregon is a great basketball state. Good players, players in the Northwest. I have no doubt that with Shante and his staff ability to recruit not only in the Northwest, Southern California, and overseas, they're going to get some kids that are going to really, you know, make that program something to be reckoned with here in a couple of years down the road. And no question, they've been down in the dumps here for the last six or seven years. There is nowhere to go but up at the University yeah. of Portland. But I have no doubt, and they figured it out. They got the right guy. Yeah. If you can win at Eastern Washington, you can win anywhere. Coach, we appreciate you taking the time. How about that heart stopper last night? Uh, Lord have mercy. Keep doing what you're doing because it's fun playing at the end of March, isn't it? It is, and we're really blessed. Uh, not only did DJ Stewart knock down that shot, but did they miss the foul shot to give us a chance? So uh, the big guy was on our side for sure, and, and we're, we're really happy to be playing again tomorrow in the semis against a really good Louisiana Tech team. Coach, thanks so much Shante, for taking the time. How are you, man? How are you? 
Yeah, well, please. I'm, I'm doing good, Coach. I'm doing. I, I, I'm just shocked that they got you on and you're <laughs> traveling. You have a game tomorrow. That's big time. I appreciate it. I'm calling Sal as soon as we get off. My wife Tatiana's over there taking pictures, so we're going to send them to him also. <laughs> That's this is great. great. Well, I, I'm, I'm uh, so proud of you, Shante. It's really in awe of your accomplishments. I mean, two guys from Galita both made Division One coaching, along with Jay Hillock. Yeah. So that's pretty special for me. It really is. I'm I'm trying to do good enough to so that they name the gym at the boys' club after me and not you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. Okay. I got to do it. Coach, thank you for thank taking you. the time. Uh, Cheers. Good luck. Thank you. you guys take care. All Thank right, you. Bye. All right, bye. How great. Wow. Come on now. That's big time. That's that's huge time. Especially that guy's pre preparing for a major game. That's a Hall of Fame coach. Come on, man. That's awesome. You go that's... back and look at Howland's record, and you're not kidding. <laughs> yeah. You wonder why he, he ever left UCLA. You wonder why. I don't know. Well, that shows how much you're appreciated all over the map and here on the bluff because we've got a few more welcomes from some huh. coaches here at U of P. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Coach. We're super excited to have you joining us. I've been going to the games for the last 31 years, and I know you're going to kill it here. So uh, welcome. Uh, we're looking forward to meeting you and your family, and we're looking forward to seeing some great basketball here in the next, the next few years. Shantae, what's up? Uh, I'm Michelle French, head coach of the women's soccer team. Everyone calls me Frenchy around here. Uh, I can't wait for you to officially get on campus and come and bring uh, the energy, the awesome, incredible fight that I know you're going to bring to the men's basketball program. Um, and it'll be cool to be able to hang out with you and get to know you and, and talk all things athletic and experience. So welcome to the Pilot family. Go Pilots. Coach Leggins, Jeff Loomis here, University of Portland baseball coach. Wanted to take a moment to welcome you and your family to the bluff. Very excited to have you here. I'm a Portland native, so if you have any questions regarding the city, don't hesitate to ask. Again, welcome to you and your family. I'm Aaron Gross, the men's head tennis coach here at University of Portland, and I uh, just wanted to welcome Shantae to the family. Um, it's a great place to work. Been here for a long time. Uh, you have the best boss in the world and Scott and amazing support staff around you who are all rooting like crazy for you. Um, we're dying to be a big part of March Madness here sometime in the near future and uh, can't wait to get to know you and your family and, uh, and hear great things and good luck. Coach Leggins, Jared Stoll here, class of 2011. Just want to say we're excited to have you and welcome to the UP family. Lunch with Leggins continues. The love fest continues. This is great stuff. This is great. St you're going you're gonna to float out of this building. I hope so. I hope so. You're going to float out of this building. All right, Lunch with Leggins. Uh, you can send us your questions for Coach Lunch with Leggins, all one word, L-E-G-A-N-S, if you want to send a question. And Joe, an alum, wants to talk to you, pick your brain a little bit about your playing style, your preferred style of playing. We talked about it a little, but yeah. let's go into depth. Well, you know, I want I want to have a team that plays fast. You know, okay. we've, we've in league in league we've averaged 80, 82 points a game. You know, um, that, that that's huge for me to get up and down the court. Now okay. it's not like the Houston Rockets where you come up and shoot a thousand threes and you're playing out. You're not, I'm not saying they're playing out of control, but you're you know you're playing at a pace where it's really it's really hard to sustain. We usually play with a tempo um, of 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 understanding, moving the ball, playing unselfish. You know, my teams the last three years have led the league in assists. We've averaged over 16, 17 assists, and that's top in the country. Um, two years ago, we were number four in the country in assists. Uh, we're up in the top scoring every year with our league, uh, in our league, and uh, even in the country. And so, Schedule. you know, defensively, um, we're going to make sure we we you know play hard, you know, play hard defense. Um, we're going to play the best teams we could possibly play. Um, Scott's been great with helping me with the schedule so far. You know, we want to play the best teams possible. Oh, see, now you're, you're, you just knew I was going to ask you about this. I could tell <laughs> because you say no to nobody. Yeah, nobody. You will play anybody. Yes. And, you know, you had Arizona on the ropes this year. You had Washington State on the ropes. Like I said, year one, you took yeah. on Stanford, you beat yeah. them. You'll play anybody anytime. Mm -hmm. You'll go to the parking lot and play. 
Yes. I mean, you, you got to play, and that's what the players want to do. And as a player, when I was a player, I always wanted to play those big games, and they, they always brought the best out of you, and you get to see what you're up against. And having having good teams in our league is going to be great too, but I want those guys to be able to feel, you know, going down to see what Arizona's playing like, you know, have have try to get a home-and-home home with, with a big-time school. But, you know, being able to play the best teams and the best players in the country, it's, it makes it easier to recruit. You know, guys want to play. They want to go down and play UCLA. They want to go and play USC. They want to play those games. And, you know, our league being so good as it is, we'll be able to play those games. And those will be good games for us. And we can win some of those games. And, I, and you know, when, we're at, when I was at Eastern, it was like, you know, we're going in. You know, they're going to buy us. We're going to get X amount of dollars for this game. We're going to go play. But now I want to go in there and I want to beat them. Our league's better than a lot of these leagues we're going to be playing against. And so I'm excited to do that. And, you know, if you go into somewhere and, and you don't think you can win, then you shouldn't be playing. I think we could beat anybody. And that's that's the mentality that our team will have. So we're going to play anybody if they want to play us. Um, it got hard at Eastern because no one wanted to pay to lose or at least get a chance to lose. And, um, you know, at the, diff at the difference here is we are at now at a conference that, you know, you can go play those teams and they'll, they're willing to play you and they want to play you. I still feel a little, which, and this is what I love, I still feel when you answer a question like that, a little edge, mm -hmm. that chip on the shoulder. You went to Cal for three years, starting point guard, undersized. You were a beast yeah. for them at your size. Transferring to Fresno State to conclude your uh, athletic uh, eligibility with your mentor. Was it... Was it uh, Lope? Ray, Ray Lopes. It was Lopes. Ray Lopes okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you were a little kid. You had a chip on your shoulder. Mm -hmm. Single parent household. You were a chip on your shoulder when, had the chip on your shoulder when folks said you weren't big enough. <laughs> you started coaching and you still coach with a chip. Are you, to the doubters who say, why would you come to Portland? Is there a little bit of that chip, that edge saying, I'll show you why? Oh, 100%. And, you know, Twitter is a thing now. You know, everyone reads Twitter. I read all the messages. You know, I look at it and I get DMs, you know, and direct messages saying, hey, you made a mistake. You shouldn't have went there. You could have went here, here, here. I, I mean, I can't wait because I know exactly what we're going to do. And I'm excited about that. And you have to have a chip on your shoulder. You know, it's always it's always going to be tough. You know, when, if you don't have a chip on your shoulder, that means you're ready to, you know, you're ready to get beaten up. And that's what's going to happen. And you got to go out and you got to be ready at all times. And I'm going to put together a team, a roster, a staff. I mean, this athletic department, as you can see, they have chips on their shoulders. You know, you want to go in and beat the best. I want to play for championships. You know, when people say, oh, you're going to take the Portland job, you'll never get to the tournament because right. they have Gonzaga. They have... They have St. Mary's. They BYU. have BYU. BYU. Yep. So what? Like what? I mean, they have to play the game, you know. And at the end of the day, you get the right guys. You under. They have a belief in what they're doing. And you're gonna beat those teams, you know. I'm not. I'm not saying, hey, we're gonna go beat them and this, this and that. No, you have a chance to go on the court and beat whoever you need to beat. And if you get a team that believes in that and a staff that believes in that, you can see. You've seen the women's basketball program. You've seen our soccer team. And so, there. That's possible, and that's going to happen. You know, I'm. I'm not selling nothing short for that. That's what we're going to do. And you know. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping from day one we're going to go find guys and we're going to compete in this league. And it's not just, oh, well, it's going to be a building. No, we're going to go compete every single day. And the people will get behind that. And then our players will get behind that. They'll see that they have support and they're going to get better. And so, yeah, we'll play anybody and we'll try to beat everybody. And we're going to. We're going to get to that point where Portland's going to be a, a, a national story because of how good we've been and where we were at. Again, we're looking forward. But we're going to see where we're at, and we're going to keep pushing. I, I got all those screenshots, and I, I, we have some great people here that could put it into a nice little text when we get there, and it's going to go out. And I'm really excited about the opportunity to do that. I'm digging it big time. Uh, you know, I had the, the, the great luxury, and folks who have watched your, your clubs in the past with you as the, as the head guy the last four years at Eastern Washington before coming to Portland, notice one thing and one thing only, whether this year you're in sweats coaching or the <laughs> other years when you're zinging your coat up into the stands, you are always on the move. You are rocking and rolling on the sidelines, and your guys do not sit. The, yeah. To me, the bench, a, a chair or a bench seat is just a suggestion. No yeah. one is sitting. Why? Why? Well, well this year we, we needed energy. And, you know, I, I haven't sat down in a game in, since I became a head coach. I, the very first time when Coach got, Coach Hafer got in a little trouble, I didn't know what to do with my hands, didn't know how to sit. Didn't, but uh, once we got comfortable, we were up and moving. And you got to be. And you got to be excited. And your, your, your players feed off you. And so... That's the that's the type of that's the type of player I want. I want somebody who's ready and ready to willing to do whatever they got to do to win. And and I, I coach that way. And that's what we're going to be. And and you see me yelling at the referees. That's not it's not good. I was just trying to. Oh get my come point on of, now, you're good. You're good. I'm getting my point across. And so they you know. But I, I I look at it as 
you got to have a chip on your shoulder. You got to be ready to fight. You got to have energy. And and when you have that, and when you have that, your team has that, and they they feed off of you. They can't see any time that you're oh shucks, we're you know we're doing this. Oh, we're we're losing. No, it doesn't matter. You're always fighting to the final whistle. And you know it's evident even even in our last game of the season, you see that we you know our guys didn't want to hold the ball. They wanted to keep going and scoring. And that's what you need to do. That's the kind of chip you need to have on your shoulder. You got to be willing to do whatever it takes to win, and and you got to be willing to do whatever it takes for your teammates to win and, and pick them up. So, old enough to learn from your mentors, young enough to relate to the youngsters. Is that is that a good way to sum it up too? That's a great way to sum it up. You know, that, that's something that that is huge. You got to be able to relate, but you also have to understand that, you know, when I played. <laughs> It's much different, you know. You, okay. They would run you around, you get yelled at, you t- but it's different. You got to understand, it's different than it was when you know everyone is going to argue the fact. Well, when I play, this is how we, it's not. It's not like that anymore. I got so you got to you got to relate to these you know young men and and student athletes, and they have to understand that you understand where they're coming from. It, it's a different. It's a different mentality sometimes. Now you get a throwback player every now and then, and you can you coach them you know any any particular way. But these are these are more informed mm. student athletes than they've ever been. And so you, you you tell them one thing, they they know exactly what, before you even ask them the question, that's not true, coach, I'm looking at it right. So you <laughs> got to be able to understand that and you got to be so truthful with these young, you know, with these young student athletes because they're already informed. They're, they're, this is the most informed, um, you know, group of people, uh, you know, I've been around and, and they know more things and they're on top of everything before you even know, like, coach, I heard, I heard you're getting some looks from here, here. Well, I didn't know. Well, I got Twitter coach. Here's the message. And so okay. those are tough things. And you have to have those tough conversations with these, with these guys, because they, they already know. And if you play the whole coy game and don't act like, you know, what's going on, they, they just, they just push you to the side. They don't believe you. So you got to build that trust. And so, yeah, they, this group, you got to understand how to coach these guys. So yeah, I, I, I have to be always willing to understand and having having to understand them and and figure them out is, is the biggest part for me yeah but i've watched you bring the hammer down and i don't mean uh you know in a nasty way yeah. but I've, I've i've also watched you where accountability is very important yeah no it's important and you know if you if you put a lot of deposits you sometimes could take something out because they know you love them you know and and i put a, I, I do my best to do everything i can to make them feel like they are the most important you know part of what's going on because they are and so you put a lot of deposits in and and you feed them the best way to get to somebody is, is my wife's cooking and so if she cooks <laughs> i'm and gonna she, remember that if she cooks for you then hey, coach you can say whatever you want man just as long as i get that pasta she made that baked pasta but it's one of those things where you you have to put deposits in before you can take out withdrawals and and uh, they have to understand that your staff you know the people around here they you love them like not just like care you love them and you'll do whatever you got to do for them and and that's what you know you you build and it just doesn't happen just like that because you said so but it's by the actions you you know you show them every single day and you know I'm not I'm never going to get on a kid and, and call him a name. I'll never get on it. Mm. And if I do go over the line, I'll circle up the team and apologize. And that's you got to hold yourself accountable too. And if they see you doing that, and you could you could hold yourself accountable in in certain situations, and then they'll start to learn to hold themselves accountable. You've come a long way. You said you had the worst attitude in the world when you were nine, ten, eleven years old. You were getting kicked out of boys and girls clubs <laughs> and whatnot. Your mentors, yeah, uh, stuck stuck with you. Yeah, showed you the way, another way. Mm-hmm. You've been through a lot. And so you understand how to deal with, I, I would imagine, a lot of different personalities. Yeah, and just growing up that way and, 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 and trying to understand, you know, you can't, you know, push to limits in certain situations. I got you. You, you got to be able to figure out, you know, like my wife says, read the room, man. <laughs> you know, and so <laughs> you got to be able to read the room and understand what you're doing and where you're at. And, and that's been a huge part of, uh, of me growing and understanding. My first year, you know, um, as a coach, I was, I was not a hothead, but I was, I was making sure we we're super disciplined. Okay. And, you got to be super disciplined, but there's also got to be like a, a place where they could have fun, you know. And and as I started understanding that as, and moving forward, I, I think it got much easier. And you know, more there's more fun than there's discipline, and that means your culture is going well. And that's what you should do. And now when the players start holding themselves accountable and holding each other accountable, it makes it much easier on me. And that's where we got to the last couple of years is I've had some great leaders on this team and they knew exactly what they needed to do. And I'm about to blow up on a guy and get a guy, coach, I got him. I got him. Just don't worry gotcha. about it. Let's just keep rolling. We got this, you know. And and that makes you as a coach proud because you, 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 you've you installed that in them. Um, you, you've seen that. You know, you, you got a guy that was, you know, a hothead as a freshman. Now he's telling you, coach, I, I'll, I'll talk to him. We'll be okay. 
Isn't that the greatest? That is the best. It yes. Makes, it makes me not the bad guy. Get him out now. <laughs> if if your guys are policing themselves, yeah. that is huge. And that that get, changed, and you can get out of the way. Yeah, it changes the cult. It, it, that that helps you. Um, you know, that helps you as you as you try to push guys forward. And you don't have to coach, you know, so much. You know, um, they're, you know, you don't have to coach so much of the. You can't do this. You can't do that. You you, you can have those guys do that, and you can worry about the X's and O's. There it and, is. And try to figure that part out. You know. Uh, we we mentioned uh, some of the great coaches here in the past. Eric Reveno, mm -hmm. uh, big time. Rev, big big time. Rev is is uh, beloved here, and you know when you were at Cal, mm -hmm. rocking and rolling, Rev was an assistant at Stanford. Yeah. yeah, I know it. I know it. So so well, I'm just saying the <laughs> ties continue to just blossom. It's yeah. just amazing how th this incredibly small world continues yeah. to shrink. We're all on the same page, and and Rev being a part of today's. Uh, oh uh, really? Yeah, Rev being wow. a part of it as well. Hello, Pilot Nation. Eric Reveno here. Fifteen years ago, next month, the former University of Portland coach. Jack Avina welcomed me as the new head coach on the bluff. So it is my tremendous pleasure to welcome Shante Leggins as the new coach. Coach Avina invited me to lunch. I can't do that uh, for, for Coach Leggins at this time, but I look forward to doing that in the near future. But for now, I wish him all the best. Uh, hit the ground running, enjoy the good folks of the bluff, enjoy Portland, um, and and uh, please keep reaching out to the alumni. We support you. Uh, the players that I had uh, for my 10 years are excited about you and excited about being connected with the program. So all the best uh, and and really wish you well. Wow. Rev, thanks for taking the time. Uh, it's just always so good to hear from him. He was he was one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, you know, we've talked a lot about your mentors as as a young boy. You know, Ben and, and, and Sal and, and Ray. Mm -hmm. But I got to talk about the women in your life mm -hmm. who have been so huge. Uh, your mother, Susan, yeah. and your wife, Tatiana. Mm -hmm. And growing up in a single parent household, I, you know, I, I get teary eyed never having met your mother who mm -hmm. passed away just a couple of years ago. I think on the cusp of you guys winning the regular season championship uh, the, the in day, the Big Sky. The day before last, last year, mm -hmm. the day before the, okay. the day before the championship. Game. Okay. Uh, Susan was everything to you, went to all your games. Tatiana, uh, your wife, the, the, the women in your world have been pretty darn important. They've been unbelievable, and they've, and I've put them through so much, and they, they stand by my side, they stick by my side. My mom is um, a tremendous lady, strong lady, um, went through a lot, had a full life. You know, when she passed, it was one of the hardest days of my mm. life. Uh, but. Mm. You know, I, I knew that, you know, she was, you know, with complications and health and things like that, you understand, but it doesn't hit you. Like, you, you know, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. You, you, you prepared for it, but you never prepared for it, you know, and, and that was that was one of the toughest uh, days of my life. Uh, but luckily, you know, I had my wife uh, by my side who's, who, who in certain senses reminds me and, and does things like of my mom. My mom had no fear ever and neither mm. does my wife. And, um, you know, before we I even be, thought I could be a, a great basketball player, my mom put the faith in me that you could be like, you don't why Why slow everything down? Um, you be as tough as you want to be. Before I even thought when I could be a head coach, my wife said, put stuff on paper. Don't be a dummy. Put stuff on paper. Be prepared. You never know what's going to happen. I'm only this. I'm only 32. I'm only 33. It's not going to happen. You're associate head coach now. You got to be ready. Uh, I'm not. Well, you know, have everything ready. And so when I got the opportunity to be a head coach, it was already, you know, dialed all the way down. And she had me all the way set up. And, Love that. And so, you know, those two ladies in my life have changed me for the better. Um, I've done some crazy things. I've done some dumb things, and they've always been by my side, no matter what. And you know, I love them for it. I I, I couldn't imagine my life without either one of them. Um, and and it, it's tough with my. I still have my mom in my thoughts. You know, we sometimes listen to a voicemail from my mom if it, it gets tough. You know, you bet. we won the championship, and you know, I'm listening to old voicemails, mm. and she hated referees. I'll tell you. <laughs> so <laughs> it made me. Think, I like her already. Know, yeah, she hated referees, and she would tell me these stories, and. You know, she would tell me I did a bad job here as a, you know, you shouldn't have put that guy and you should have done this. And now you go home and you got the same thing for my wife. You, what are you doing? Like, why didn't you call? She a was time a baller, out? man. She was a baller. Oh, boy, I tell you. Washington, come on now. She, she knows. hates that I don't call timeouts. <laughs> <laughs> 
you should have called the timeout. They're on an 11-0 run. And I'm like, well, it, it didn't seem like because they play so slow. And it was 11 points in a row. You're losing it. And so being able to have her, you know, really really balances it. You know, these last couple of days have been it has been a whirlwind for us. We've been, you know, going through everything. But at the same time, she's always, you know, constantly saying, hey, you need to be able to do this, this, and this much better. And Love it. And having that, and having that on my side is unbelievable. Mm. You're a blessed man. I I really am, and sometimes I try to I try to mess that up. Try, you, you just watch yourself now. Yeah, I know. Just watch I, yourself now. I believe me. Uh, a lot of folks are are really jacked about what is happening here on the mm. bluff, and of course, this is a great time to to jump in and get season tickets at portlandpilots.com slash leggins l e g a n s. That's Shantae Leggins. That's your new head coach, Shantae. Uh, I'd love for you. Uh, this is a great chance for you to give a message to to Pilot Nation. I know you've got work to do today, but man, it's all yours. When I say trust me, we're gonna we're gonna get there. Trust me, and it's gonna be sooner than later. It ain't gonna be one of those things where you're gonna be building, building, building. It's gonna be trust us. Welcome to the bluff. That's the first time I've said it. Um, <laughs> I'm excited about this opportunity. I couldn't be, you know more blessed you know i have to thank scott and, and and father portman for the for the opportunity for this but everybody i've met so far has been unbelievable get behind us get behind this team because it, it is going to be something special and you could see how it is already working with all the other sports on campus and that's a huge part of why i came here because i believed in what was going on and i was able to see it it with my own eyes our tennis team is really good. i mean I, you can see it and when you when you got a when you got a tennis team playing in the, in in their tennis court and they're beating teams like in pepperdine and malibu and they're beating them you know and you can see it you have to have that belief and have that belief in our program because we're going to get there and it's going to be a lot of fun and i want you to you know buy stock now don't come on late we'll take you late <laughs> <laughs> no, we want you late, but buy stock now because it's going to be a lot of fun to be a part of. And um, we're going to have a great, great season. You know, we're going to have great young men. And I'm just really excited to be the head coach here at Portland. And we're going to do great things. Man, I'm ready to get season tickets. Uh, welcome, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate well done. It. Go Shant Pilots. Yeah, Shante Leggins, the new head coach of the Portland Pilots. It just sounds good. Kind of rolls off my tongue. Yep. Thanks for being with oh. us today, everybody, from the Child Center. If you think today was fun at the Child Center, you just wait till the season starts next fall. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Stay safe and go Pilots. Go Pilots.